Hello, my name is David Jesperger. And I'm Todd Locker of Mosbach Manufacturing. Today we're going to talk about our X100 load bank. We're going to discuss some of the features, setup, use, troubleshooting, and testing of the load bank. So I'd like to talk about the portability of the load bank. This load bank is 32 inches tall by 16 inches depth by 18 inches wide and weighs 110 pounds. It's a very versatile product with 100 kilowatt capacity and 5 kilowatt resolution. It's capable of testing five different voltages, 480 volt, 240 volt, and 208 volt three phase power, as well as 240 volt and 120 volt single phase. All of the metering is conducted via the digital shark meter built into the front of the unit. It's capable of monitoring voltage, frequency, current, and power, and has built in data logging capacity. The unit also has voltage test jacks built into the front of the unit. The unit comes equipped with built-in safety features, over temperature and over voltage protection. These can be seen via the indicator lamps on the front of the load bank. The load bank requires 120 volt external power to power the fans and controls. The customer makes his power connections via the three cam locks on the side of the load bank. Finally, there's a ground for the customer in the bottom corner of the load bank. Each is equipped with three fans that blow through the load bank and cool the resistors. Next, we are moving to the shop where we're going to show you how to set up, operate, test, and troubleshoot the load bank. The X100 load bank is designed to be used indoors in a dry environment between an operating range of 0 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. When not in use, we recommend storing the load bank in a dry, tempered environment. When preparing the load bank for use, it's important to remember to keep 10 feet free on the intake side of the machine and 30 feet free on the exhaust side of the machine, completely free of obstructions. If you're using multiple X100 load banks, it's important to keep them spaced at least 30 feet from each other and don't blow the hot exhaust from one toward another of the load banks. Once the load bank is safely positioned, we're ready to begin to set up for a test. First, it's important to set all the switches to the off position. Start with the step switches and put them in the down off position. Next, we verify that the main power switch is in the off position. Finally, it's time to select the voltage. For all 480 volt three-phase testing, make sure the voltage switch is in the down position. For all other testing, including 240 volt and 208 volt three-phase, as well as 240 volt and 120 volt single-phase, the voltage selector switch must be placed in the upward position. It's critical to set this correctly before starting a test. As we mentioned previously, the user is required to make five connections to the load bank. It's important to begin by connecting the ground connection on the load bank to a known earth source. Once the ground is solidly connected, it's time to make the power connections to the load bank. It's critical that the source power is turned off when connecting to the load bank. As you can see, I've made three load connections. For all three phase testing, the load connections are made A phase from the source to A phase on the load bank, same for B and C. Finally, we make the connection with 120 volt external power for the fans and controls. It's important to note that when using the X100 load bank to test a single phase source, the power connections are slightly different than we showed previously. Line one from the source must be connected to A phase of the load bank. Then line B and C of the load bank must be tied together and tied to line two of the source for the load bank to work properly in single phase mode. Now that the load bank has been properly connected and set up, we are ready to operate. At this time, it is safe to energize the source. For today's test, we are going to use 480 volt three phase power for the test. We start by once again double checking that the voltage selector switch is located in the right position. And then it's safe to turn the main switch to the on position. At that time, two things should happen. The green power lamp should illuminate and the shark meter should turn on as well. If either of the red safety indicator lamps are turned on, you should stop, turn off the load bank and not proceed. Now that the main switch is on, you should hear the fans running and feel airflow from the intake to the exhaust. Next, we are going to cover load step engagement as well as meter operation. The X100 load bank is equipped with six toggle switches, a master on, a 5, 10, 10, 25, and 50 kilowatt load steps. 
In order for the load steps to engage, the master switch must be placed in the on position. Once the master switch is engaged, any individual load step may be engaged or a combination of load steps may be engaged that will sum together. Next, we'll show you how to use the digital shark meter. It's capable of displaying voltage, current, power, and frequency. You can toggle between modes by using the down arrow. Note that your load bank is delta configured, so in measuring voltage, you should use the volts line-to-line -line measurement. To monitor current, press the down arrow again to see current on the A and C phases as indicated here. The down arrow, one more time, will indicate total power on the top line. Press the down arrow one last time and frequency will be displayed on the bottom line. One more added feature on the load bank are the voltage test jacks. You can use a handheld meter to test the voltage of the load bank. Do not test any other parameters aside from voltage with these test jacks. Once you are finished testing, it is then time to safely turn off the load bank. Start by turning off all load steps, followed by the master load switch. Once the resistors are turned off, allow the fans to run for three minutes before turning them off to allow the resistors to cool. Once three minutes have passed, it is now safe to turn off the load bank. Now that the load bank's been powered down, it's safe to disconnect it from its source. It's important to disconnect the cables in a particular order. Begin by disconnecting the external 120 volt AC power. Next, it's absolutely critical for safety to ensure that the source has been disconnected and de-energized entirely before disconnecting the power from the load bank. Once that's been checked, it's safe to disconnect the power connections. After power has been disconnected successfully, it's safe to take the ground connection off of the load bank and return it for storage. Now that we've shown you how to set up and operate your load bank, we'd like to take a minute to show you some tests that you can do to periodically check and make sure that your load bank is in good working order. The four tests that we'll demonstrate here are all documented on our X100 customer checklist. The first test we'll demonstrate is a mega test. It's designed to test the insulation from the power circuit to ground and will detect any electrical shorts. We recommend the X-Tech Instruments Insulation Tester Model 380363. The mega meter has two leads. Connect the black one to ground and touch the red one to the A-phase cam lock. Then set the meter to the 500 volt setting. Press and hold the test button and allow the test to conduct for several seconds. You'll see that the resistance between the A-phase cam lock and ground exceeds two mega ohms, which indicates a large resistance from the power circuit to ground. This is a good thing. If this number were low or approached zero, there would be reason for concern. The mega test should be repeated in similar fashion from B-phase to ground. And finally, on C-phase to ground. Next, we're going to test the airflow to ensure that the fans are in proper working order. For this, we recommend using the X-Tex Instruments Thermo Anemometer 407113. In order to conduct this test, you need to have the ground connected as well as the 120 volt power. Place the main switch in the on position. It is important to take a measurement behind each of the three fans. Each fan should have a minimum air velocity of 1,000 feet per minute. When taking the measurements, make sure the anemometer has a proper orientation towards the fan. Next, we'll demonstrate how to check the resistance of each of the load steps within the load bank using any handheld electrical meter rated for at least 600 volts. To conduct the resistance test, you must connect ground and external 120 volt power to the load bank and turn the main switch to the on position. We'll turn the master load step switch and the five kilowatt switch to the on position and use your electrical meter set to the ohm setting to test the ohms from A to B. Record your measurement and then test from A to C. Record another measurement and finally test from B to C and record the third and final measurement. Conduct the same test for the 10, 10, 25, and 50 kilowatt steps and compare the measured values against those listed as acceptable on the customer checklist for the X100. The last test we'll demonstrate is a current test to ensure that each of the steps is dissipating the expected amount of current. To conduct this test, hook up ground, external 120 volt power, 
as well as 480 volt three phase power to the load bank and turn on the main switch just as you would in operation. To begin the test, set the digital shark meter to the amp setting, turn on the master load switch and the five kilowatt step. Note that the five kilowatt step should draw approximately six amps and the phases on A and C should be balanced. Turn off the five kilowatt step and turn on the 10 kilowatt step. Again, it should be balanced and the 10 kilowatt step should draw approximately 12 amps. Repeat with the second 10 kilowatt step, again drawing approximately 12 amps per phase. Next, with the 25 kilowatt step, drawing approximately 30 amps per phase. And finally, with the 50 kilowatt step, drawing approximately 60 amps per phase. If you are attempting to use your load bank and it's not operating how we described in this video, there are a few simple troubleshooting measures you can take that may help to solve the issue. If you believe you've hooked up your load bank properly and nothing happens when you turn the main switch to the on position, you should first check to make sure that external 120 VAC power is connected to the side of the load bank. If this doesn't solve your problem, you may need to check the control circuit fuses. Consult your X100 operations manual for detailed instructions on how to check the fuses. When operating your load bank, if the over temperature indicator light comes on, turn off all load steps immediately and allow the fans to cool the resistors for several minutes. If after this time, the indicator light is still on, turn off the load bank completely and allow to cool for a period of time. Ensure that you are operating your load bank in a suitable environment. If you're attempting to use your load bank and the red over voltage indicator lamp illuminates, you should check one of two things. First, check the voltage selector switch on the front of the load bank and ensure that it's set to the proper position. If it is, you should check your source. Ensure that the voltage from the source is as expected. We hope you found the information in this video useful, but if you have any additional questions, you can consult your X100 Operations and Service Manual. Or you can contact Mosbach Technical Support at 412-220-0273. Thank you for your time and we hope your X100 load bank serves you well.